here we are, Carlos. Thank you very much, Carlos. A Carlos pleasure. Pinheiro for being for being uh, with us. Well, you are in one of these code sessions that we are doing. No? I'm Miquel Collet, Global Swine Technical Director for MSD Animal Health. And today we are here with you, no? Carlos Pinheiro from the CEO of from Peak Champ Pro Europe. No? Or the uh, one to blame. No, okay, the one to blame. <laughs> no, I remember that since you were really, really young, numbers were always with you. That uh, numbers, and you are keep doing that. So, Mr. Yeah. Mr. Number, maybe you, I should call you. I became a data maniac. Data maniac, I like that. Yeah. Uh, Carlos, puff, my goodness. When we talk about smart farming and all these kind of things that now they are going on, looks like a balloon hmm. that it's going up, it's going up. It's it's a balloon that they will explode or what is that? Mm. We're in a clear moment of change in general in the world. Of course, of course, in our sector is the is the same. And when there's a there's a change to promote a, let's say a positive effect for the people, you need a certain wow effect, something that is. Uh, that is shiny, that is sexy, that is attractive. Uh, but beyond of that, you need something practical. So once that you, get, you have the attention of the people, you need to do something practical uh, about that. And that is the role of the, of, the, of the vets, of the technicians. We need to take the parts that make sense, that are useful to promote the daily change on that. Because from, from standing to running, you need first to walk. So this is the role of the professionals that are here is take the digital tools, the process of digitalization and make it Can part I of the routine. Can I read uh, saying you that, that face recognition is something that you may have under question mark or I'm I, going too far? Uh, qu quite likely. At, at least I wouldn't say for research. For research purposes, that could work. But for daily use, uh, that part, the metaverse or the big metaverse or whatever, this could happen. No one knows because there's hundred details that we need to deal with. But meanwhile, to put this on the on, on the real farms, you need to involve the people. To need to generate the benefit, a daily benefit or whatever for the for the farmer staff, for the guy. Because if not, they're gonna keep their conservative approach. They're going to do the the, the same. And right now we have a challenge. We need to be sustainable. And sustainable means first, be efficient. Secondly, use better resources and decrease emissions. And third, involve people. The three things, sustainability has three dimensions. And sometimes we forget two of them. That is the reason how uh, people is so, so important in this. We are so important in this. And in practical terms, and talking about real things that you are already having. Hmm. So far, I know that you have the, these tools I know a group of those that they are around by your security. Correct. And I think if I'm not wrong, I would like that you better explain because I remember the first exp the first experiment. I don't want to I don't want to call that experiment trials that we did on that. That it was these ones that we were just tracking the movement of the people that we were tracking internals by your security, giving the people the this this kind of things that they were going through different yeah, places exactly. and by that we were improving. But I think that you were doing something different now, or you are adding that. Uh, complimentary. Complimentary. So you are keep doing this, this, this. Yep. Biosecurity. Are you keep working on that? The concept is basically the same. We need to generate data on biosecurity because the only data that we have until now is, let's say, subjective data because it's data from service, and that is fine. You need a first picture of what is going on, but you also need some objective data from movements of the people, either internal that it was the most challenging part, the first uh, part that we run. But now we have a system to control external biosecurity, to control visitors, to control tracks. Basically, it has, let's say, two levels. The first one, which is an electronic visitor's book. But secondly, is something that you can feed either manually or with the GPS from the tracks or the vehicles or whatever to define who can go in into the farm or to block someone before entering the farm, or uh, detect a breach, or react to that breach. So it's a way to generate objective data, quality data, using a simple of use, but very sophisticated tool, very practical for the, for the people. So we can understand better what's going on around 
movements. Uh, uh, and the for farm. the health, if I'm not wrong, I remember that you were having as well some something. Correct. Correct, because it's something that uh, we couldn't find nothing in the in the market that was addressing that because health is extremely important for the vets. No, no, no one vet will tell you the, the opposite. Uh, so we couldn't understand properly health in terms of, we don't know the prevalence. We, we, have, we have not a map of diseases or health, what's going on in this nursery about enteric problems and in that fighting about uh, respiratory problems or whatever. And if we know, we know once that happened. So we can try to do better next time, but we cannot normally correct as we would like. So we have designed a simple system that in five to 10 minutes, uh, a, farm, a normal person that a worker on the farm can, based on observations, you define the frequency. If you'd like to have daily or weekly or monthly, of course, we, we recommend to do it, uh, uh, to do it uh, daily. Those observations are collected and we know things as prevalence, or incidents, how these animals are treated in terms of the dosage, in terms of the right antibiotic and the relationship among that. So we are quite satisfied because it's a, we have a real time map of diseases in one farm or, or 500 uh, farms in a very easy, easy way. Will the smart farming replace farmers? No, of course not. It's impossible. First, because of the uh, idiosyncrasy of our of our sector but it's uh, something that we we can do it better using these technologies or these tools technology never should be a barrier and a, and, a, and a tool is as good as the use you make of uh, of that so the tool is gonna feed this sow, or you're going to know what is the the the, the incidence of that of that disease but is your brain or is the, the farmer's mind, or is the, um, the strategy of the general manager that that's going to generate the value by using the information. People used to, um, to mix data, information, and knowledge. And it's a human brain using information who generates knowledge to make better decisions. That is the process. I have one fear, Carlos, because uh, some of these technology things are based on cameras, are based on wires. So cameras and wires, they don't go well with rats. They don't go well with dust. They don't Absolutely. go well in a farm environment, ammonia and all these things. So are those things real possible things to do? Because anytime mm. that I'm seeing this technology that they are based on having fancy cameras that works for the first time, but I don't know how long that they work. Or... It's true. And sometimes, and even the camera, you need to clean up the, the cameras. Sometimes it's very difficult because the camera is very, is very uh, high or, or whatever. But one of the things that happened in the last decade is that we have very shiny technology but not appropriate for farms. Farms is a challenging environment for certain circumstances. You have uh, mentioned the, the dust or the, or the, um, the, the, the rodents or, or whatever. Right now, the technology is becoming more mature than ever. So we have learned during this last decade and now we have something and wireless systems is something that it was not working properly in the past, but right now they're doing. And this is a huge step beyond in terms of that. So this degree of maturity right now is ready to use because if you have to think that this is not working the the wire is uh, damaged uh, or whatever you're not thinking in what is interesting for you your time is valuable thinking in prevalence in incidence in understanding how a sow is eating or whatever making the use of the data and not fighting with the technology and now technology even these two things that i have mentioned are ready are smooth are natural for the for the people. We adopt technology very fast if it's natural. Think in an iPad. My mother is using an iPad because it's very well thought. It's not a barrier. So I think that now we are ready in this, uh, in this uh, scenario for, for making a good use of this technology. Well, uh, I, I'm thinking about this guy that they have a farm that's never been into technology and now hmm. they want to go into technology. What will be the first thing that you will advise him to do? Uh, choose something that is uh, natural, well adapted for your farm and get your people involved. Right now, you have a lot of technology on the market, but not all the technology is ready. So my first advice is be careful choosing which are the right ones that are, that are ready and always work with something that is going 
help is gonna help in you to put that at work. It's not something that they leave the, the packet in the, in the entry of the farm. So the two things together, the tool plus someone that in a few days, in a few weeks or whatever, is involving farm staff, if info, is involving vets, is involving the high management to make a routine of that. Without that, could be very disappointing because you expect more. And, and probably you know, you're gonna get a, a different thing. So not forget the implementation, the practical implementation, choosing the right and mature technology. Thank you very much, Carlos. It's been a it's pleasure. Been a, it's been a pleasure to be with you. Always. To have all this conversation. And I think that, I guess that we can take this conversation again. You know that For we sure. don't have a lot of time. So, we will see so what's happening in the next years and if we were right or wrong or let's, whatever. Let's do that. Let's let's come back in a few years from now and see what if we were wrong or right. Deal. Okay? <laughs> Done. Thank you, Carlos. Thanks to you. Thank you. <laughs> Bye, guys. Have a nice day. <laughs>